I'd like to talk to you a little bit about uh, the James Rachel's essay, God and Morality are Incompatible. Um, this, the first four sections of this essay are really all set up um, to his major and only point, I would say. But, but it's, it, it's important to read because he wants to be clear about what he's talking about uh, when he talks about God and uh, especially uh, the idea of worship, which is really an interesting subject. He's quite right uh, in saying that it's kind of an unexplored territory. What, what about the whole phenomenon of worship? What does it entail? Um, well, what it entails is a recognition of a human being's uh, subordination to God. And, and in the end of section four, in talking about these famous instances from the book of Genesis involving Abraham, especially Abraham's uh, being called upon to sacrifice his son Isaac, uh, he wants to lay out what he takes to be uh, the kind of inevitable uh, nature of our relationship with 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 God, and that is one, as he says, of total allegiance. Uh, you know, you know the story of Abraham, where God, God tells him to make a sacrifice. You know, make a human sacrifice of his son, and Abraham is ready to do it, and and God sends an angel at the last minute to to stop him and say that he's he's passed the test. So of course he doesn't do it. Thank goodness. Um, but what is that, st that for Rachel, that story is emblematic of just the typical person's uh, belief about God. And that is that, that to believe in God is to believe in a being who has unquestioned and unlimited authority. Um, right here at the top of the second column, page 372, he says, and to recognize any being as God is to acknowledge that he has unlimited authority and an unlimited claim on one's allegiance. Thus, we might regard Abraham's reluctance to defy Jehovah as grounded not only in his fear of Jehovah's wrath, but as a logical consequence of his, his acceptance of Jehovah as God. That is, if you really acknowledge that God exists, you also acknowledge that um, God has has entire and, and unlimited uh, and unquestioned authority over you. So when he goes on to quote Camus, Camus was right to think that, quote, from the moment that man submits God to moral judgment, he kills him in his own heart. The idea is that once you actually start to question, God, you know, start to evaluate God's behavior, as, as many people do when they read the Bible, what they basically done is no longer regarded God as God because God cannot be subjected to human moral evaluation and still be God. As he says at the bottom here of this paragraph, that that God is not to be judged, challenged, defied or disobeyed is at bottom a truth of logic. That is, if you accept a being as God, that being is not to be judged, challenged, defied or disobeyed. To do any of these things is incompatible with taking him as one to be worshipped. So the idea, it, it really is, I think, uh, kind of, uh, yes, uh, what Rachel's is saying, I, I think, is true about our conception of the, you know, the usual conception of the monotheistic God, the God of Christianity, Judaism, Islam, perhaps other faiths, that, but this God has unlimited authority, um, and that basically that we entirely put ourselves in his hands in terms of you know what we do and what we think <clears throat> and this sets up uh rachel's uh, question or his problem right and, and that is uh whether this uh this idea of uh, of a of, of god and and the concomitant idea of uh, absolute allegiance to this god is compatible uh, with morality, with our notions of what it means to be a moral person. 